and welcome to Inquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you, fellow choir people. Inquire to Choir is a channel dedicated to helping people working with non-professional choirs. You can scroll through the videos to get the sense of the vibe here. And if you happen to like what you see, you can subscribe. And if you would like to keep in touch, you can like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Today's topic is intertwined with the last week's video. Uh, it's about audition process, but today's topic is about the technical details of the same. I've held a dozen auditions so far, so today I'm giving you my best tips and tricks on how to hold and organize a choir audition. Okay, so today I'm going to divide and conquer. No long talks, just questions and answers. Grouped in three parts, before the audition, during the audition and after the audition. So let's start. Before the audition. Who are your potential singers? This should be the first question you ask yourself. This answer defines all the rest. Where should it be? This seems obvious, but at the same place where you have your rehearsals. However, if you have multiple locations, you should hold an audition in all of those locations and make sure you have a keyboard in all of them. If you're starting out and or you're in need of a bigger member update, you can even go to a specific targeted place where you know your potential choir members could be and give an audition there because that way you can interest them without them having to go where you are. When should it be? If you're just starting a choir, whenever you're starting a choir. If you're already a choir, then my recommendation would be in the second week of the new concert season. Most importantly, after the first rehearsal. For reasons given in, I think, this video. Make sure you're not scheduling it during the time your potential new choir members are not available. If it's a choir of students, make sure the audition is not during any holiday or break. If it's a choir of people with regular jobs, don't schedule it before regular working hours are over and don't schedule it when most working people are vacationing. You know, summer holidays, around New Year's and stuff. If it's a choir of seniors, don't schedule it too late in the day. When should it be exactly? I suppose you have a set time and date of your rehearsals. If you can sacrifice one of the rehearsals, make it in the time of the rehearsal. Because that way you can immediately see if the person, if the candidate is available at that time. However, if you're having an audition in a targeted place mentioned a minute ago, take notice of when the biggest traffic is in that place and schedule it then. How many auditions should we give? It depends. I used to have uh, two sets of auditions with my choir, one in the end of September and one in the end of January after the winter break. But now, because there are enough members, I only have the one in September. However, make sure you are having at least two auditions in one set. For example, if I held an audition on, let's say, 28th of September, I would probably give another one on 30th of September, just in case someone couldn't make it the first day. Give people a chance. How should I advertise it? Well, it also depends. Are you a fancy choir? Go accordingly to your image. Not the one you wish to have, but the one you have only improved. You can invest in Google Ads, but I find them to be a little too intrusive. Social media is the way to go. Make your PR person do all the promotions. Promote your audition on your Facebook page and schedule a Facebook event. And engage your choir members to share the event on all of their social platforms. You can even promote the event on Facebook, like uh, boosting the event. It's not that expensive and you can get a lot of coverage that way. If you have a YouTube channel and you have some great performances there, like choir performances there, be sure to include the link in the Facebook event. If you have the time and skills, and maybe money, it depends on the production level, you can even film a video invitation for the audition, where your potential members can see who you are and what kind of a choir it is. I highly recommend that. If your potential new members are not on Facebook, then invest in a radio announcement and or take it to the local newspapers and announce it there. Also, if you have some kind of a mailing list of choir people in your area, be sure to give them the info. I know what you're thinking. What are you talking about? They will not help me. They're my competition. They don't want me to take their potential choir members. Not so fast. 
maybe some of them are in a male choir and keep getting questions about choir recommendations but from women they can take them to your choir if they know you're interested finally don't underestimate the power of a simple flyer you don't even have to hand them out in the street just put it someplace where you know your potential new choir members hang out I often see people investing a lot of time and effort and money in the graphic appearance of the visuals that can certainly make a difference but Honestly, I don't think it makes such a huge one. If money is not the issue, then go for it. Just one thing, don't sell your soul during the promotion. People can sense when a choir is just a boastful pickup line. How will I know how many of them are going to come to the audition? Well, that's easy if you think in advance. If you know that the potential number of people who are going to show up in the audition is huge, you can include the following statement in your advertisement. You can apply by sending an email to, then you give your email address, which works. If they send you the email, then you know they're coming. But I'm telling you this immediately, not all of them are going to send that email. I agree, it's not nice of them and it shows a lack of commitment. However, it doesn't have to be like that. Maybe they just didn't take it seriously, that you really want them to send that email. Or maybe they were afraid to commit to an audition or they decide to come in at the very last minute. Again, give people a chance. This also plays into the fact that they are non-professionals with maybe no experience. If you have the email thing, then you can schedule them and let them know the schedule via email. Take five to eight minutes for every candidate when you're creating the schedule. And if somebody comes in without sending the email, they will have to wait until the scheduled singers are done, of course. If you don't have the email thing, then wait for the audition to start to see how many of them showed up. During the audition, who is listening and deciding about the candidates? All of the people from the choir's leadership are in the room and listening. The person in charge of the audition process who is testing the candidate is the choir conductor. The decision should be mutual, but if something is undecided, and needs someone's opinion to prevail, that someone is usually the conductor. Notice that while one candidate is in the room, others are waiting outside. What to do when the candidates arrive? If they're scheduled, then it's settled. They go in one by one. If they are not, and a group of people is waiting in front of the room, at the beginning, take the whole group inside and introduce everyone from the choir leadership to the potential new choir members. It's a polite thing to do, and they immediately know that you know what you're doing. And then make them fill out the questionnaire. The very same you should give to every candidate who was scheduled. What questionnaire? The one you think of. My suggestion of questions is full name and surname, date of birth, email, mobile number, Facebook name, if they're students, which university, high school, and which year, have they ever sung before, solo or in a choir? If yes, in which one? Do they have any music education? If yes, what kind? Can they read music? Special other interests? How they heard about the choir? Why they wish to be in the choir? Which song they're singing for the audition? With this questionnaire, they introduce themselves to you and it serves as an official document. Also, during the audition, the conductor can take notes on that very same paper. How to audition? See my previous video about that. After the audition, how to decide which ones are in? During the audition, everyone should take notes. Everyone from the choir leadership, that is. And I recommend after every candidate leaves, just to comment briefly, yes, no, maybe. It helps because when you hear a lot of people, you can forget who sang what. After all of the candidates have been, then you talk and discuss. The choir secretary is the one responsible for handling the statistics and counting the votes. If there are some problems, discuss and brainstorm. Decide mutually if somebody deserves a chance. How to announce the results? Two ways. First, you can type a list of people who are in and put it on the message board. Or you can send an email containing just the names of the people who passed the audition and send it to all of the people who have been in the audition. But be polite and put all the email addresses in BCC, the hidden copy. 
because that is a nice way to say to someone you are not in, you did not pass the audition, but only we know that you have auditioned. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Let me know on Inquire to Choir social media if it did. And please like this video and subscribe. New videos every Thursday. And speaking of, the topic of the next video is... Soprano! Alto! Tenor! Nice! How to know which is it? Conduct well, conductors, and I'll see you on Thursday. Bye!